So I was doing a project that's going to be using a uh, programmable ROM. And so I looked in my junk bins. I think I have more than this, but this is what I found. <laughs> I've got to put them all in one place. Um, so these are UV erasable programmable ROMs. And I'm doing a board. Uh, let's see. Let me show you the board. I did another video on the board. Uh, but it's going to be it's going to be this board, which adapts uh, one of these guys into a, a 8755. OK, so um, I originally had designed the board and I decided to redesign the board depending on what parts that I had available. So I have uh, so these are 27, 2764s. These are 128s. These are 256s. These are 512s. These are one k, uh, one megs, and these are one and two meg. I don't know, something like that. Maybe this one belongs over here. Anyway, I think these are two megs. So I have a lot of these, and I have a lot of these. Okay, so uh, I I put in I put in the uh, twenty seven five twelve into uh, into into my boards. This is my board. So now I have an uh, a C five twelve here, and it's going to have a whole bunch of extra data lines. I'm only going to be able to use two k. And this is 64K. So A11 through A15 are all grounded. I could maybe put little jumpers there and you could select programs and everything. Eh, it's just too complicated. I just want to do this. Okay. So um, what about putting different chips in the same location? Like, can I put a 27, uh, 256? Just plug it right in there. And yes, you can. Uh, there's this online, I don't know whoever created this uh, as a genius, but I've used this diagram many for many decades now of the c compatibility between the different uh, different ROMs. And so the difference between the 512 and the 526 are these two columns, and it's basically A15 is on pin 1. Um, and uh, I have it tied to ground anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I could either, uh, anyway, long story is, I could either use those chips or those chips, which I have tons of, all right? And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, this is the new, this is the new board. So just a lot of grounded pins and everything else goes through. But uh, yeah, let's just take a look at these. That's sort of what this video is about. Um, you can see different different makers have different different size chips and stuff. It's kind of interesting. So like uh, like this is a 512, and you can see how big the die is, right? But here's a 512, same manufacturer. Uh, look at how small. Look at how small the die got. So just over time, they went to smaller and smaller uh, feature sizes on the chips. Uh, this was 90. Uh, this was 91. This is 94. <laughs> Oops, 94. So yeah, a big change happened there. Here's another one. It's just even it's a little bit different. Different size chips. All kinds of different size chips. Um, Here's an old uh, 128 chip, and it's giant. And here's an old uh, 256 chip, and uh, it's teeny tiny. It's really tiny. Amazing. Anyway, uh, when you get up to the big boys here, this is a uh, uh, can't really tell from the part number. I don't know. Anyway, look look at the size of that. Look at the size of that IC. Yeah, these these are these guys are these guys are big. Uh, this one looks like a two meg part. This is probably a two meg part as well. But yeah, those, those suckers are suckers are huge. But take a look at the technology though. Um, here's here's two chips, and the die isn't that much bigger over here, tiny bit, but not much bigger. This is a two fifty six, and this is a one meg. So yep. Technology marches on. So in order to use these guys, you have to have a programmer and you have to have a UV light to erase them. Uh, but I have both those things, so yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be a fun project.
Yes, I could put an electrically erasable part in there and that would be boring. I kind of want to keep a vintage and I've got a bunch of these things that I never use, so why not?